I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, April 3rd's uh, emergency management uh, update meeting. And uh, I'd like to have uh, people go around and uh, give a report of what's happened in the, the past week, um, any concerns that they have, and, and, uh, and then I'll give uh, folks a chance to ask that person questions uh, before we move on to the next person. Um, so uh, with that, I'll just give a, a brief update to uh, the SDOC meeting today. Um, they reported that there were 389 positive tests and 17 fatalities. 20% uh, of the infected patients required hospitalization and they believe that there's widespread uh, community trans transmission at this point. Um, they also believe that as many as 25% of the um, infected patients may be um, asymptomatic uh, transmission. Uh, the feds have almost depleted their uh, stockpile. Hospitals, EMS, and long-term care are a priority for getting uh, the supplies and they're looking at methods for disinfection of those supplies for reuse. They're doing more testing and they have increased testing capacity. Uh, VDH is apparently doing 300 to 400 tests per day. Um, most hospitals are also doing uh, testing. Uh, they're not doing any antibody testing at this point. And there's been a number of people that have been making handmade masks and they just want to caution people that they do not replace um, the standard measures to protect yourself, such as social distancing and washing your hands. Um, EMS responders should assume, assume that patients are infected and the notification process is uh, still under review. And they're working on email notification of uh, supply requests. Apparently some people have been putting requests in for supplies and they have been not getting an email confirmation back and they're looking into that. Um, for the rest of it um, related to Vermont cities and towns, I'll let uh, Ron do that update um, when we get to him. So with that, I will pass it over to Susan so she can give her update. Okay. Um, I'm really, Ron is the person who deals with all this stuff, so I'll just pass it right up, right to Ron. Okay. Ron. Yeah, I, can, I, I can give a quick update. The, the town office and other departments are functioning at a low level on site. Uh, most of the office staff is Still trying to sort out some off-site work issues, but everybody's working on it. Uh, we are, if anybody asks, continuing with zoning permits. Kim and Kristen in the office are sending up ap applications that have dropped off or mailed in. So zoning is going as uh, regular as it can be. Today we issued our first totally digital permit without any people interaction or paperwork uh, going back and forth the application came in the in the door and it was emailed to me I processed it uh, from here and then sent it back to Kim for recording so that was pretty seamless no no major hurdles there so um, other than that VLCT is continually putting out guidance to all the towns it's really hard to summarize it um, but their websites wide open for people to go there from anything from how Permits are being done, grants are being done. We just got an email two minutes ago from the state VTRANS about how to do reimbursements for municipal expenses. So things are just very fluid. And basically going to the source is still the best thing. Go to the state um, Department of Health's website, go to ACCD for permits and grants and compliance things with that. And of course, VTRANS is relatively shut down so uh talked to mark french today and they're they have one or two district staff out there responding to um, emergencies and then able to call people in but those folks are pretty much off the road as well 
uh, state police and police are out in the roads. I've heard plenty of reports that they're monitoring traffic. Uh, Department of Motor Vehicles is monitor monitoring traffic uh, for out-of-state vehicles even, just uh, educationally, not, not for an enforcement at this point. And I haven't heard anything really local. You know, we had our pothole this morning that highway had to run out and fill, but that's kind of more like normal business. So it is, I don't think there's gonna be any delays in service for anybody except for the land records right now, those were deemed not critical. So if you're having a loan closing, mortgage uh, refinancing, those could be delayed uh, while the state and clerk's offices and things sort out how to how to keep that part moving. But right now it's relatively shut down. That's about it from here. Okay, uh, does anybody have any questions for Ron? Okay, then uh, moving on, uh, Brad. I've been fairly busy here with the ambulance. Um, things ha haven't definitely slowed down here. Um, just to give you guys a brief summary of what um, NEMS has done in the High Park area from March 3rd to today, um, we've responded to 25 911 calls in the town of High Park. Um, so the call volume for us is um, staying steady, maybe a little higher than normal. Um, and we're treating every everybody as they potentially have it. Um, working with the local fire departments to make sure um, North A Park and Hyde Park um, firefighters are also safe when uh, they come to assist on the ambulance there. Um, I've had them put in for more requests um, with the state. Um, High Park just got another second um, batch of supplies yesterday. Um, so we're looking pretty good for uh, gowns and, and that. Um, we got some face shields. Um, the only thing that we're still pretty low on is the N95 mask. Um, so I don't know how many select board members I have on here, but I emailed Ron earlier. Um, they make a filter cartridge that will go to our air pack mask. Um, and uh, I was looking to see maybe if we could purchase them for the air pack mask and that would give us the full face protection plus the respiratory protection and we would never have to worry about um a shortage of mask for the firefighters um, because they're also as of wednesday the department of health um, is urging all fire departments when they respond to co calls and fire alarms and that that they take the safety precautions and um wear safety goggles, a mask, and uh, some rubber gloves. And one one person will go up and meet with the homeowners and um, talk to them and find out if there's any sickness in the house and that. And then we'll make the judgment call on how many people we're gonna send and then the rest of the um, firefighters will stay in place in the trucks unless they're needed. I do sit on the calls on Wednesday with the state for the, the EMS part and that. Um, they go into more details on that call than they do for the emergency managers and the select boards on the Friday conference call there. So. Um, I have been getting a lot more information from them on Wednesdays versus what I do on the Friday conference call. Uh, we have 17 confirmed cases here in Lamoille County. Um, don't know exactly what towns they are, but um, as of today, there's 17 cases here in Lamoille County. That's all I got, Karen. Carol? 
Great, thanks, Brad. That was uh, a lot of helpful information. Um, I agree that those uh, respirator attachments for your SCBAs is uh, is a great idea. Um, I have an older style one uh, for my face piece uh, from my hazmat days, and I assume you're getting you you want to get um, are they P100 cartridges or 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 are you get going to get um, uh, other cartridges that are like organic vapor in that? Um, for right now, um, the quote that I got, I had them do with the P100s for the for this purpose. Um, so after this pandemic is over, um, we will still be able to use them. So it won't be a one-time use. Um, we could use them and get different different cartridges and use them for brush fires that would be a benefit to the firefighters because normally on brush fires we're not um wearing our air packs so the firefighters are breathing a lot of smoke so this would be another safety precaution to help the safety of the firefighters so it'd be a multiple use function for for this adapter for the the air pack mask I think that's um, an excellent idea. Uh, Brad, it's Ron. Uh, after we get done going around with everybody that's on the call, we'll we'll hang out a little bit with just the select board to talk about that uh, proposal that you have for purchase. And then uh, anybody that wants to stay for that can, but anybody else that wants to drop off the call can do it. So we'll we'll get to that at the very end. Sounds good. Um, how, how are the supplies for the FAST squad? Um, I also got another second shipment in um, yesterday when I got the fire department. So um, between the uh, fire department and the fast squad, um, each one of us got an extra 25 gallons that the state supplied, and they supplied two boxes of uh, face shields. Um, this round, they didn't send um, any N95 mask. They were just um, dust mask, so um, it's better than nothing. So yeah. um, we're looking, we're looking pretty good for between the fast squad and the the fire department for PPE. Um, and I talked to John Savage today, and he was going to put another request in for North High Park, so their guys will have some more PPE, and this would be their second batch they're getting also. Okay, great. That's that's good news. Thanks, Brad. Um, Brent. Uh, John did say, I just talked to him. He was putting that order in as 10 minutes before uh, I got on the phone with you. But everything else is the same as it has been. Well, only about three or four of us have been in the firehouse that I know of, so. We just had the one call with Hyde Park, the electrical fire and everything seemed to work fine there. We should be all set with the gowns once he gets everything back on the second one. Good. Is the uh, um, the machine getting uh, going with that or is that gonna have to wait? Uh, they're supposedly got it in delivery. They just sent me the drain kit for it. Well, they were supposed to send it at the beginning of the week, but I think they forgot because they just said they just shipped it today. So the drain should be here hopefully in the next two or three days so we can get the floor put back together hopefully before the machine gets here. But it's supposed to be coming. Okay, great. Uh, anybody have any questions for Brent? Hearing none, let's move on. Yep. Okay. Um... Amy, why don't we go to you? Hi, um, thank you. First of all, I'd like to just thank everybody for these weekly updates. I'm, I think it's really important for us to stay in communication with each other. Um, the library is closed. We've been closed since March 15th, um, and we are not operating any kind of services going in or out. We recently, when the town officially closed all their properties and and buildings we um, put some signs up saying authorized personnel only because there are people out there who have keys to the library trustees and um, the friends of the library 
and uh, I contacted everyone and, and let them know who the three authorized personnel are, and those are the paid staff members. Um, I will be at the library once a week, probably, and other than that, working from home and other staff members working from home as well. Um, spending some of my work time checking in on some library patrons that we know are, the library is one of their only social gatherings of their week, of their days, and um, just want to check in with those people to make sure that they are feeling good and, um, and also remind them to stay home and stay safe. And um, also pitching the Hyde Park helpers and the good news is everybody knows about the Hyde Park helpers and the other news is that they just feel like one was they I think they appreciated hearing from me that it was a trusted resource and um, and also just really encouraging people to rely on not going out if they don't have to um, it, just to slow the spread and I think a lot of people we're taking it very seriously and we want everybody else to too. So we're, I think a lot of people are just feeling a little bit lackadaisical about some of these stay home orders. And we're just trying to remind people that that's the best thing to do to take our medicine by staying home and, and feeling that loneliness for a while, but it'll, it's the best thing in the end. Great, thanks, Amy. Uh, anybody have any questions for Amy? Okay, hearing none, um, Allie, why don't you go ahead? Um, nothing has changed for me, still working from home um, in the office occasionally for different things, um, but other than that, I am home. Okay, uh, any questions for Allie? Okay, um, Angie. Okay, um, I'm with the uh, Hyde Park Helpers and so is Karen on this call. And uh, I'll talk about my piece, which was we did a volunteer meeting on Zoom this past week and we have about nine volunteers that are all set to go out and do shopping. And we send one or two shoppers out every day to help um, Hyde Park residents. So the process seems to be working really well and all of our volunteers are briefed on confidentiality, the safety process, the Vermont guidelines for um, helping neighbors, and then um, how to link up to the sheriff's department to drop off the items in which they then deliver. And on our end, everything's been going pretty smoothly. We appreciate all the help that the town has been giving us and getting the word out. And we really feel like this is gonna help our residents um, much more in the future, if not now, but but sooner rather than later. So thank you. Great, thanks Angie. Uh, anybody have any questions for Angie? All right, Chris. Oh, this is Karen from the Hyde Park Helpers. Oh, sure. Okay, go ahead, Karen. Okay. Uh, well, I just wanted to report sort of our, our statistics. We've had um, chef, seven shopping trips. Um, uh, one involved WIC, which was we had to do a lot to figure that part out and help them with that. Um, we had a, a banking trip. We had um, somebody's, uh, Ron had suggested that we add in um, just visiting with people on the phone, and we've added that in, and we today had somebody ask for that. Um, we've had um, many, many calls to the number of people just asking about it. And I think like Amy um, said, they want to they, they want to just feel comfortable with it. And um, I think there's a real comfort that it's available, whether they're using it right now or not. They feel really good that, that they can at some point. Um, we did, and then we've also been helping with um, deliveries from the Charlemont to the shelter because they were, or to the community house because they were running low on their volunteers. And um, so we've been teaming up with them and had four deliveries uh, for meals um, done that way. And we've got seven queued up over the weekend. One um, question, that two, two things we have questions about. One is the um, postcard. Um, idea and whether or not we ought to do it or not um, and because uh, we said we would bring it back up this week and then the second question um, 
is uh, we had one call for um, somebody who might need a transportation to a doctor's appointment, and that's not something we're going to be doing. Um, but I didn't know if anybody there would have a resource um, for that. We have been talking and um, a lot with Jim Curran or Curran at United Way, Way, and um, we've been helping each other because we had two calls from Morrisville asking for the service and one call from Waterville asking for the service. And we've been helping people find out how to find the help in their own community um, because we're sticking with just in Hyde Park, which is hard to say <laughs> to people, but that's what we've, we've, we've decided. Great, well, thank you. Uh, next on the list is Chris. He says he doesn't have a mic, so he has to type it in, Carol. Oh, 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 okay. So he says, uh, I'll just read it for the recording. We've delivered a batch of groceries this morning to a resident on Battle Row. Our call volume has stayed the same with respect to the family court orders. Those have rose as many conflicts have come from children and their school vacations. We are fully prepared with responding safely to incidents with policies in place to which deputies wear when interacting with the public. Okay, anything else, Chris, or uh, is that it? Okay, anybody have any questions for Chris? All righty, then moving on. Um, uh, Roger? Okay, um, I'm going to talk for the fire district, the water department. Uh, this week we reserved, uh, received a paper from the state of Vermont Water to chlorinate the water. The water has been tested real good all up until now, but as a precaution, they want us to start doing that. So I had a problem with the coordinator, so I've ordered some parts for it. Hopefully I'll have them first of the week and sometimes by mid next week, we should start doing that. Yes. Yes, I have that. So are, since you're not chlorinating yet, are there any orders? Um, for the residents, uh, boil or anything like that? I sent out a, a paper, a, a small note in the paper with the bills at first of the month. So everybody should have got a notice on it, but I didn't have any date on it when we were gonna start it. Okay. Any questions for Roger? Okay, moving on, uh, Roland. No, everything's good on this end. I haven't heard nothing from anybody and everything's still good. Okay. Well, that brings us to the end of the list. Uh, I'll give Susan an, another opportunity. Do you have anything you want to add after everyone has spoken? Yep, we have Paul still on the line. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Paul. Hello there. Thank you. Paul Nesky here from uh, Sterling View. Um, so what I've, what I've got to report is a uh, take off from what Amy was saying earlier about the high park helpers. I'm really pleased with, with um, Karen and her crew. Uh, and um, it's, everything seems to be working well from this end with, with Angie and um, Laura and, and people that have uh, helped us out here doing some grocery shopping for uh, some of the residents. Uh, the key element, I think, for what we've done is uh, the, the park has had bought a prepaid uh, card there so that uh, there's, it's relieved everybody of the burden of passing the credit cards around back and forth, uh, checks, cash, whatever. So that seems to be working well. And I really appreciate uh, Roger Marcu and his, his department stepping up to, to aid in those deliveries. That's uh, the last integral part of this process and it's working well. Uh, the Park uh, Health and Wellness Committee has uh, completed door-to-door um, -door canvassing in the park, uh, for all the residents. Uh, one of the things that they dropped off this past week was an emergency medical information to assist uh, EMS in the event of a medical emergency at their residence. And uh, they were voluntarily to fill out a, 
on a, on a pretty extensive list of things uh, concerning their medications and that, their doctor and phone numbers, uh, uh, complete list of their medications. Um, and if, if there's anything uh, uh, amiss with their uh, their health, if they put it down there um, that they've been tending to, and and then put this all in a canister in their um, in the refrigerator. What we're lacking at this point is an identification or something to indicate uh, to the EMS people that arrive that there is a canister in that refrigerator. Um, I know years ago we used to have that little red insignia that was put on the refrigerator and that it was a little packet of material and in there was, was this information. Um, I know some people in the park have taped information on their refrigerator for that purpose. Um, so I was going to ask Brad if there was anything specific that he had that he could lend a hand with or uh, some advice as to how we could get this accomplished. So the other the other thing that we've done is to uh, inquire of the residents um, any health concerns that they have otherwise that, uh, so that we need to be aware. Uh, so for an example, if they have uh, uh, health issues with their oxygen level, uh, they need to have uh, uh, electricity for, for whatever system they're employing or using. Uh, we're looking down the road, not just for the current situation, but if, it, if we, um, we were to lose uh, power, for an example, we should be attentive to those homes that are necessary. You should have uh, someone looking in on this issue for them. So we're identifying everybody that has automatic uh, generators. There's a couple of them already here in the park. Uh, so we've identified that. We're looking for people that are on Lifeline. Uh, Want to know who their who their neighbors are that are <clears throat> making sure that they're being monitored properly. And of course, we're uh, we're looking also when we make these calls for symptoms that people may may be exhibiting. None yet so far with the, you know the usual dry cough, fever, sore throat. Um, towards that end, we're making calls to all the people from out of the residence. Uh, uh, there's snowbirding now. Um, so we've got two back in the park that are quarantining. Um, they're almost nearing their end of the 14 days. And then we're going to have an influx of others coming in uh, as soon as they can make uh, flight arrangements in some cases. Uh, some can't find flights to get here. So um, but we're looking forward to getting them. And when they arrive, um, they're going to have to be quarantined for that period of time. So other than that, uh, we're still... Uh, gathering our forces with that health and wellness uh, group. Uh, they're active. Uh, they haven't done the Zoom meeting yet. Uh, so I understand it. They're going to meet in the, in the back lawn of the clubhouse with lawn chairs. Uh, having a powwow in a sense. Uh, should be a nice day tomorrow. They're looking forward to it, getting out. Uh, getting, uh, more than a significant distance apart. So we're pleased with the process that they've endeavored and I look forward to, to having them you know, continue uh, writing the manual for it so that no matter what comes along in the future, that we'll have something to guide us. So that's it for now until I can visit with Brad. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, any questions for Paul? Uh, Carol, I don't have any questions for Paul, but I do want to uh, go back to uh, two things that Karen had talked about. Uh, the postcards and uh, kind of elevating the notice to the residents about what services are kind of settling in now, if you will, and becoming um, organized and all that good stuff. So I'll take that offline with Karen and uh, and Susan to just figure out how to get something, you know, bring up the notices to the general public, people that don't have phones, people that don't have internet, uh, whatever the case may be, to try to figure out how to reach everybody. Mail is probably the best way. Uh, the second issue was, uh, and I don't, I just don't know the answer to it or where to where to send people. But if we do get calls for doctor appointment trips, um, is that something that um, the the on call bus service folks do? I don't, or through United Way, I'm not sure where to direct people. So I don't know if anybody knew that answer about what to do with somebody that. High Park helpers won't be driving. Yeah, know, Susan, I, I, 
you got me there, Carol. I think um, if they need to get to a doctor's appointment, they first should be talking to their doctor's office to make sure that's what they're supposed to be doing. Because the doctors are doing more and more telemedicine. Everybody's getting themselves geared up for it. So the first thing to ask them is if they have talked with their doctor's office, because then it's going to be the doctor's offices that are helping folks figure out how to get there. And also, um, I believe I heard as of yesterday, RCT was going to still run only on scheduled appointments. So somebody might want to contact RCT. Yeah, that, that was a good point, Brad. Um, I was going to ask if uh, if they were still doing that and, and what precautions they might be taking. Uh, yeah, that would be something good to look into. Uh, but Susan's certainly right that they shouldn't just be going to the doctor's office unless their doctor has instructed them to come in. And this is Amy from the library. Something that we do a lot is try to help people find rides. It's kind of ridiculous how much we um, do that. And it's really specific. RCT and all the other um, agencies that have rides, it's really specific to the, the person in the case. So it can, it can be really, that's a tricky one. Okay, thank you, Amy. All right, um, if there's no other questions or comments, um, Susan, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we finish up? Um, I just add, you know, now the conversation is switching to when any of us goes out, we should have masks. Um, the idea being that it isn't to protect us, it's to, if you know, you're asymptomatic, you could still be spreading it. So that it, it's the, it's just in the, another layer of precaution. My question is, and don't tell me to make one, <laughs> where where are we supposed to get these? And the, the governor's press conference today, as he said, they aren't, they aren't saying that yet, but they've had people um, you know, they've had businesses calling and saying, what can we do? What can we do? And when they started about masks, I just this afternoon when I was walking the dogs, I went, we should be, we should be talking to, um, to Vermont flannel, or is that something as a community that we see if we can figure out and take on? And, um, so that, so that we have an answer. And again, it's sort of like with the helpers, you can say, or we get words out and say, okay, here are, here's where you can get masks. Here are masks. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but it's, again, it's going to be one of these additional things that are going to be asked of people. They will be, currently, it would be impossible to buy, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to take them away from frontline providers, even the, you know, even the minor ones. So, um, maybe putting our heads together and what people can hear or coming up with some ideas of what we can do to make sure that that uh, folks in, in Hyde Park have access to masks to wear when they go out. And I'm also, um, you may have gotten an answer on, on the earlier phone call. Vermont's doing a lot more testing. How long does it take to get the test results back? I believe they were 24 hours. Um, but that, okay, that's that sounds that's quite right. reasonable. Some of them are 24 hours, and then the other ones, Susan, are up to 48 hours. Yeah, so that may depend on which lab it ends up going to. Is that fair, Brad? Yes, and then also um, the, all the off-site testing, they have to get the, the swabs to the laboratories to get tested, so that takes a little while for them to get them there. Okay, and uh, on the the mask question, Susan, I, I do know that there's uh, there are groups out there that are that are stitching masks according to um, we'll say pre-approved uh, designs, um, but it's not quite clear how uh, distribution is is happening. Um, it, it seems that that may not be thought out. So. Um, Perhaps for next week, we can 
uh, have a little bit more information on that, on how those might get distributed and who they may get distributed to and by whom. Um, so uh, I'll look into that a little bit um, and maybe uh, Ron can give me a hand with that and we'll see what we can find out and uh, report back next week. Okay, great. Uh, sure. Just quickly, this is Karen. Um, Healthy Lamoille Valley is really working to put a push up to to get um, some of the homemade masks available. And they're going to have something on their website, um, hopefully by Monday, about it. So they're working on it too. They would be a good resource. Okay, good. Um, because I know there are people in uh, in Hyde Park that are making them, and in my own home as well. <laughs> um, Brad? Yeah, um, Carol, I'll send you an email. Um, there's a lady from Cambridge and a couple from Johnson that um, made a bunch for the fire department in the ambulance service here. So I'll get you her contact information. And Susan, I'll leave you one on the firehouse door handle and you can stop and pick it up this afternoon. Oh, okay, thank you. Is, is that something that you'd be interested in for the fast squad, Brad? What's that? I'm having some for your fast squad members. We have some. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, so what I've been doing um, to keep our N95 mask clean, I've been having the uh, members put the homemade ones over it, so it's protecting the N95 mask, so um, we can reuse them like they're suggesting us to do. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, um, unless someone else has uh, some comments or questions, um, I think that does it for us today. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for participating and providing information, and uh, we'll do this again next week. And uh, with that, we can close the meeting for today, and we'll just keep uh, uh, Brad, Susan, and Ron so they can uh, discuss the, the uh, uh, respirator attachments. Yeah, thank Thanks, Roland. everyone. Thank yeah, you. Thank you all. Ro Roger, Odette, and Roland should stay too. Bye bye. Yes, that's good. Yes. Bye bye. Uh, Ron, do you want this uh, to stay being recorded? Uh, sure. You can. You can do it. There's a quorum of the board here, so. Okay. I guess I'll just turn it over to you, Susan. You know almost as much as I do about Brad's request because we talked a little bit and I sent you Brad's um, email, but I'm not sure Roger, Dead, and um, Roland are all up to speed. So maybe you, you can take it from here, I guess, Susan. Um, okay. It's uh, well, and I think Brad explained it, you know, pretty well. It's, it's just a, it's another layer of safety precautions. I would, um, and again, this is the sort of thing keeping track of costs that someplace out there, hopefully, communities will be reimbursed as we as we upgrade equipment that we have or as this goes on and on if it necessitates buying additional equipment um we we just you know it it's um i can't what was it was like thirty four hundred dollars i can't i'm not looking at the email right now four thousand dollars what was yeah, it? yeah 40, 47 i think yeah 47 okay um it's something we'd have as a permanent investment. I can't, uh, again, the health department is slowly but surely as, as more little steps. It's like everybody now, they'll, within the next couple of days, they'll be saying when you go out, they recommend that everybody will be wearing a mask. Um, we just, as, as we learn more, we keep trying to upgrade the protections for folks and particularly for people that are that are going out in public potentially on a regular basis to, you know, to provide assistance to people. So I, I mean, I can't, I think there's a, we've got some money in the equipment fund and I think I'd right now I'd take it out of the equipment fund and there, there's going to be all sorts of things that people are going to have to figure out financially when we, someday when we get to the end of this. Susan, can you hear me? I know. Yep. Can you hear me? Just Roland. Yeah. Go ahead, Roland. My my question, I guess, is um, now this is going to be just for the High Park Fire Department, right? 
well, that's what I've got a quote on um, because I don't know what North Hyde Park has for air packs in that. And I don't know if Brent and John want to go that way. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't want to step on somebody else's toes on another department. You know, I'm just looking out for my guys. You know, Brent and I talked earlier there and I explained to him what what they were. Um, so if it's something North High Park wants to think about, absolutely. You know, I'm just looking out for the safety of my guys right now. Okay. Now, how many of these, I don't understand this, but I've, I've never seen what, what it is. But when you get them, I definitely want to see them and understand it more. Yep. But <clears throat> the thing is, um, how many guys will this cover? I mean, how many air packs will this cover for this price? So with all the NFPA standards, when we got all the air packs there, um, every single person has their own air pack mass now because with all the standards, uh, we can't share masks like we used to years ago. So every single firefighter every year gets fit tested for these masks there. and. So a unit would go on each one of their masks. So you have enough for, um, you got 20 members now? 22, I think, something 22. like that. Yeah. So you got, you'd have enough, is everybody certified to wear air packs? Well, everybody has a mask that has been fit tested for them, like Eddie and George, they don't do the annual um, air pack certifications anymore, but they still have a mass assigned to them. So if they went on player call, they would have a mask where they could use and they could put that. Um, okay, is, is there something, Brad, that you could, um, you know, because here we're going to spend $4,700 and I know where we are and all this and anything we can do to cover everybody is better off we are but is there something that <clears throat> something that can be worked out between Hyde Park and North Hyde Park so we ain't gonna get a double whammy here or, and and no and and then if North Hyde Park comes along in um, another week or two and they're gonna want these too um, you know we got three three circles here we got we got Hyde Park North Hyde Park then we got Eden. Is there something that we could talk to Eden and see if they would kick in some money for these and so we could cover both stations at this point or see I'm trying to act Brad. on it now because as as we're having the shortage of the N95 mask, a lot of the departments are going this way. So right now it would be the first of May if I put the order in. Um, it would be the first of May before I got them, you know. So if we keep on prolonging, prolonging this, the farther out they're going to be on back order, just like the regular N95 mask. Brad, yes. I stayed in in case there was a question, but it is, I don't think it's going to matter because you guys switched to all MSA and we're still with a Scott. So whatever you guys buy for respirators, I'm pretty sure is not going to work on my pack. No, it won't yeah. because more, more. Morsel is also looking into it, and they have the Scott packs, and it's a complete different unit. So I think to answer Roly's last question is, is uh, if I ended up, and I talked to John five minutes right after I talked to you earlier, Brad, right now we're not looking at it. But if, if we're going to end up doing it anyways, I'm going to have a whole separate total bill that's not going to work with your stuff, and your stuff isn't going to work with mine. So it wouldn't make a difference if I decided tomorrow I wanted to. It's going to be a whole different, a whole different ball game. Okay, that's that answers that question, Brent. I didn't know, but thank yeah, you. I I talked to Brad right after I talked to you earlier, and, and that's what he was telling me about. And because they're MSA and I'm Scott, we can't interchange. Like, so he can't buy twenty and say, "Okay, here's ten for you guys." Now it's not going to work. It'd be whatever they bought. So I guess my next question is for Ron: Is some of this going to be covered under the coronavirus or? <laughs> We're, we're submitting everything under coronavirus for the next two months, probably. That's unusual. Just, and then we're going to see okay. what's this. There's no guarantee on any of it that's going to be reimbursed, though. 
Okay, I understand that. I, so, Roger, you're out there. I yeah. guess you done my talking. And... Um, just a quick, Brad. How many are you are you looking to buy? For right now, what I did is I asked him to give me a price on thirty of them. <laughs> um. Real realistically, I know guys get trained, but realistically, how many? How many of your firefighters actually do the air packs and would need these? Well, everybody except for George and Eddie are still certified to wear air packs if they had to. Um, yeah, that's, but that's not what I asked. <laughs> I asked how many, because again, sort of. Through the looking at information, it's really a pretty small handful of you folks that go out and and really do all the work. Right. So I'm going, I, you know, and and again, I'm, I I've got two thoughts going simultaneously here. One of them is, you know, uh, fifteen might be plenty, but it's also with something that's a shortage. Why why buy thirty if fifteen will get us through? Because they're going to be other because everybody's scrambling for equipment. So why end up with stuff that there really isn't much of a chance that we're going to use? Good well, I, did the, I did the 30 because we have 30 air pack mask. And to answer your beginning question, um, when they put this cartridge on, um, the requirements of wearing an SEBA is totally out of the picture now because. All, you're using a full piece uh, respirator respirator at that time, not a SCBA positive pressure air system. So anybody, long as they're, they're they've been fitted to that mask, they can wear that without any requirements there, because all it is, you could basically go to a hardware store and buy a regular respirator with the filter cartridges on it. Because all this is, that's basically all, all this is, is just a little adapter where there's going to be two cartridges that hook to it. Can those cartridges be moved from one mask to another? Yes. So we have, so. right. So if we, if we got 15 and then they just, if somebody was going out, they could attach this. And then when they got back, they could detach it. Yes, they could, but he, so then you're going to have to sanitize it every time, Brad. Right, exactly. So you're getting into the same situation where once we issue this to somebody, that's going to be their own because it's just going to be like the air pack mask because we can't share air pack mask there anymore. So once somebody is assigned this adapter for their mask, that's going to have to stay with them. It won't be able to be a multi-use with different members. Is that Susan. where you were trying? Okay. Um, it it really is um, one one adapter per per person. I I have per person. okay one of these that's issued to me uh, from my days, and um, there's valving in there that need that would need to be cleaned and and all that. Um, and now, is are replaceable after that. Now, I think what Susan's saying, Brad, and you tell me I'm wrong, Susan, if I am, if you could get by with 15 and put them on your 10 or 11 first responders to the scene, would that be good for now? Would that, uh, if, was that if, what you're if, saying? Because I know you... You probably got some that don't go into every every incident. I mean, you got a few that goes in, but you know, do you have all twenty of them in there at once, or do you, you know, you you have a uh, assist or something where you got what three people that might go on an assist or something? Yes, but the only problem with that, I I understand what you're saying, um, but what if them. Th 10 people that we issue these to don't show up on this call. Well, see what I'm saying? You know, you see, because we can't, we can't, you can't interchange them, you know, so.
you can't just leave them on the truck so whoever comes in they can throw it on you i don't know right I, I, got, I, right I got i got that part but again i'm saying is we've been looking at lots of, of fire data you you have a, a well, I'm sure it's the same in all departments. You've got, to, if you will, a hard core of folks that show up most of the time. If you come, you may you may have a roster of 30 people, but if 15 of them are there 90% of the time, I'd be surprised if it's that. Where I think you can drop down to there 10 or 12 of you folks that are there all the time. And and so do you, do you take one? Well, I. I don't know exactly what that number is, but that's what I'm trying to find. So if we bought 15 and you put them on the 12 people that show up the most, then you've got a couple in spare. So if somebody shows up for something important and they don't have one on, then you've, you've, you've got those couple of spares to attach to their packs. And once that is attached to their, their mask, then it can't be used by somebody else. I understand that. So right now we've been averaging between 12 and 15 people to, on a fire call. And does that have George and Eddie on there as well? Yes, it does. Okay, so that's the 12 to you're down to 10 or 12. Again, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm trying to nitpick, and I'm really not trying to nitpick. I'm trying to be, you know, <laughs> as I watch people hoard toilet paper. If we can, right. if we can get by with 15 right now, let's get by with 15. And if in another couple of months we need to buy more, that's okay. Um, but, but I don't want to buy 30 and just everybody's got them because everybody's got them. I don't, and there, and then there's somebody someplace that can't get any of them because. We've got 30 of them. Susan, can I ask Brad a question? Sure. Brad, is it the adopter that's expensive or is it the canisters? Um, only only because my thought was this. is I think I hear what Susan's saying, but if you bought the adapter for everybody and say you only bought, you need two canisters for those 15 people that show up, that's actually 30 canisters and 15 of the things. Oh, so. Okay. Could you do an adapter for everybody, get the canisters for your important people, and then build that stockpile as you went? Because I can't believe the adapter costs more than the canisters. And yeah, then, like you say, then later on, you can buy different canisters for your chimney fires, you know, your forest fires, and not have to feel like you got to buy more stuff. So the adapters are 125 apiece. In the cartridges. that was 125, yeah, 125 early, and that's for the adapters, yeah. I guess I gotta see this stuff to understand too. Okay, and then okay. the canisters are the canisters are 31.57. So if you bought your, your 30 adapters at $125 a piece. Everybody has the capability now of using those two pieces, your your two filters. Yes. So I don't so have a so we could do the adapters and we could not purchase so many cartridges right now. I think that's what would make sense to Susan. Because the cartridges just alone for the cartridges it totals $947. Um, the, for the uh, 30 that I asked for the quote on, it would be 3,700 for just the adapters. Susan, I have a question. Sure. Brad, we were looking at your payroll last year for the whole year. There was about eight people on there that probably didn't respond to more than two or three fires out, out of your old um, department. And we're spending three three thousand thirty five hundred dollars for for gear for them, and now we want to spend some more money to put in the bath. And it just seems to me that 
where, where we have people in the fire department that don't really want to be there if they aren't showing up the fires. Yeah, we did have that problem, Roger, and we cleaned house last year because you guys were aware of a couple of the members that we asked for their resignation. Um, and now you, we have a we have a you, crew. You're we telling me you keep people out of there? Excuse me. You're telling me you guys clean more than eight people out of the fire department through the whole year last year? I don't because there's about eight of them that didn't draw hardly any page yet, and the and the two that you're talking about that you got rid of weren't even on that. If we're just going to have a number in departments that people don't show up and they don't show up to practice, as far as I'm concerned, they're not legally should be wearing an air pack, air pack or going into a building because they aren't even trained. So again, I'm going to say we've been averaging for a fire call between 12 and 15 people. And when we do trainings, we have 17 to 18 people. So oh, okay. I'm just telling so you what our averages are yeah, lately. No, no. No, I, I appreciate that. So if, if you're trained, if you have 17 to 18, then it, and again, if, if two of these, if two of these people are George Cook and Ed, you, you know, I don't want to, obviously they count, but they don't count in this number that I'm looking at, then it would seem to me if we went ahead and got, if you got, um, if you got half that, even if you got, even if you got 17 adapters and the canisters that went with them, you ought to be in good shape. Yeah. Can I ask that you why you're... Nice to have everybody, but I think if, if that's what's realistically showing up, and if you end up a little bit short, well, that's life, you know? And, and again, they're not saying you can't go, this is the ideal and this makes it safer. Well, if you end up with a situation that you got a couple of folks that are going in there that don't have it, then you, I, I don't know how you, how you manage it, but you figure a way to manage that. I'll make the motion that we order 15 of them for now. I'll second it. Yeah, the adapters and the canisters, and, and that and that lets Brad get this order in right away, so we at least get this. And then Northside Park, if you're looking and you want to do it, it sounds like this is it's with all sorts of supplies. People people needing to jump fast. So if you decide that you want to you want to do this. You guys talk about it right away and let us know so you can get an order in too. And, um, you know, that would be fair for everybody. Can I, can I ask something? Um, Brad, does the, um, those MSA adapters, do they use the 742 series um, cartridges? I'm not sure, Carol, um, the information I have, it doesn't say, it. of course, it gives me the part number for the cartridge for the MSA, you know, so we can yeah. go yeah. go out eventually to the, once the stores start restocking them, um, I'm sure, it, because it looks like the regular adapter for any respirator. Yeah, because uh, it's it's quite possible that it is the 742 series, and if that's the case, if North Hyde Park were to buy some at some point soon or in the future, um, that even though the adapters are different, the cartridges are quite possibly the same, so that there could be a bulk purchase of cartridges. Right. And, and that's what I was trying to say to Brad is I think the important thing is, is that he gets all the adapters that he needs at this point, because if we split costs sometime down the road and go with all the cans, it, he's got to have the adapters for his mass. I got to have them for mine. I'm not looking at it because I'm still working out a $10,000 bill for a washing machine. So if Brad gets those coming through and they do accept it through the coronavirus thing, then great. I'd order them. But I, I think, and you can weigh in how you want, but I think it's important that he has enough adapters that every member is different 
we can't treat them differently. If somebody shows up at the firehouse and they're asked to go out in the world with a respirator on and Brad can't give it to them, well, then you're telling that guy you don't need to be a member on a department because he don't have the mask. You have a motion on the floor. <clears throat> I'll call a question. Okay. okay. Um, it's to buy, the motion is to buy uh, 15 adapters and the canisters that go with it. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Just let Brad get the order in right away. All right. So just to confirm that, 15 adapters with the cartridges. Right. Correct. Okay. Th thank you, guys. And, and, and Brad. Yeah. Once this is over with, and, and, and we'll get the rest of them, I mean, coming, but, you know. Right. We're just, just trying to watch out for everything, you know. Yeah, no, I, I, completely, yeah. Understand, yeah. I completely understand, and I thank you guys very much. Um, and, and, yep. and again, Northside Park, if you want something, let us know. Northside Park is going to come in there. That will be fine. And then, you know, we can work out with them and do what we got to do to make everybody just at this point, you're just going to have to, you know, give them to your most important ones that show up most of the time. Yep. And the, the rest of them use the uh, N95 mask. Right. 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 It, again, yep. it's not as though they're going in unprotected at this point. Right. We'd also, right. my, little, my little brain's going, I'm at North <laughs> Park. I wonder if we can get that washing machine in under Corona. <laughs> might, might be worth a try. What the heck? Well, yeah. me and Rowan are going to work on that. <laughs> I guess I guess if our president can put in $5 million for his own businesses. Yeah, we ought to, we ought to be good for a washing machine. Come on. <laughs> well, we're going to go. try, but. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it works for you. All right. Okay. So if the meeting is done, I will stop. Is that anything else? Right. I'll let you I have. the meeting and I'll stop I'll stop recording and then you can continue if you like. Okay, but I think I think it we're good everybody, right? Anything else? Right. No. No, I'm good. I gotta run anyways because I have another conference call for Johnson. Oh, I know it. Say okay, Brad. everybody. Thank right. you very much. Thanks, Thank Brad. you for taking care of us, Carol. Everybody Thank you. Good safe. night, everybody. Thank you. All be safe. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye.